everybody. So this is um, a reading that I'm doing um, regarding Chris Watts. Now, we all know he's in prison. It's not like he's going anywhere or whatever, but I think it's going to be interesting to see what shows up regardless. Okay, one more. And what I'm using, and I'll show you guys, um, I have such a small space here. I have to use the smallest size cards possible in order to put this whole spread out. But this is what I'm using. It's called the Bluebird Lenormand. It's a nice tiny little deck, and I get I just get it from Amazon. Um, I have other decks too. Uh, I guess I can show you real quick. Shadowland. French Cardomancy, Gilded Reverie, and Malefique Lenormand. There's several different decks that you could use. So let's move on. I'm curious. Um, also, I'd like to preface this uh, reading with, so sometimes I'll get like a, a dream about a reading that I'm going to do. Um, and uh, what it might be focused on. And I'm telling you what. Um, I had the creepiest, creepiest dream yesterday. And it had something to do with something very dark. And um, it was scary, you guys. In fact, I haven't slept since. <laughs> I've just been up since then. Um, hopefully after I do this reading and cleanse myself really well, um, I'm sure I'll be fine after that. But it, it's, um, it's a very heavy, dark, cold presence. And I'll, I'll get into that more here. Let's see what the cards have to say about it. I'm going to, I did uh, shuffle before I started. I'll do another one here. Okay. Chris Watts. Okay. Okay, there's definitely affirmations regarding that this is who we are talking about. Mm -hmm. Oh boy, okay, so I, I wanna point something out really quick. So um, I always look for affirmations regarding if this is the person that we're talking about. And this is what I got. So I got the gentleman looking at the sky, which is, um, it means several different things to me. Um, but knowing that this is about Chris Watts and what happened, and I'm, I'm trying to um, um, oh, just kind of look into, into his inner self right now, uh, which is scary. I'm not going to, I'm not going to lie, but um, he's looking, this is Chris. Maybe you didn't see that very well. I kind of flashed it too quick. I projected his image onto the gentleman card, the scythe. And then the lady. The lady is right here. And... The scythe, in, he's looking at... Um, an ending that shouldn't have happened. It was something that he cut short. And he's also, of course, across from the Skythe is Shanann. 
and he turned his back on um, the heart and the stars, which, in, like I said, I have different terminology for these cards, so if you look it up, it's going to be different, but um, so he's turned his back on love, like longevity of a love. He, um, in the stars, and um, the stars are meaning like um, a bigger, a better life. He turned his back on that. Um, also, because this is this is red and red in in um, layers here, and it's so hard to describe. But it's just um, the first layer. It's like a peeling an onion when you read these cards. So also for the quickness. This also has two meanings, and don't get mad at me, of NK as well. So this is like, whoo, this is definitely an affirmation that um, this is about Chris Watts. And below the gentleman is a, a closed book. It's a book of secrets. And below that is a coffin. And the coffin is not always, but death. In this respect, it'll be death. So let's move on here. Next to the coffin is a house. So, oh, so, um, what he did, this is the scythe, the action he committed, the scythe, a book of secrets in the house leading to the tower, which is, um, in my definition, either a hospital or in this case, a jail. Oh yeah, so the birch rod is him beating himself up for um, making this decision. The crossroads is a decision between the flower's life and the cross is death, which put him on this path that has um, um, that has affected it, created this ripple effect with. Um, everyone everyone actually and I mean anyone that's ever heard of this case this is, has, has affected them <clears throat> okay so So there's two different, like I said, there's two different layers to the lady here because I'm doing this about Chris Watts and he had um, two leading females that led him to this, to, to where he's at now. So like I said before, the first definition is Shanann because he's looking at what he had done to her, the result of what he had done to her. And um, also he's looking at... Um, if he never would have, okay, it's like, um, because of another woman, NK, is he's, he's actually starting to, um, see the path that he was led on and he was willing. Okay. You guys, I'm not saying he wasn't, but, um, there was definitely a, um, another hand in this. And he's, he is looking at her and, and as he's looking at her, he's sitting on secrets. And as he's looking at Shanann, he's sitting on secrets. So, I mean, this is just so, this is amazing. Also, another dual, another reason why this is a dual card here for both of those people. Shanann is in a garden 
So I believe that she has moved on. It took her a little bit, but she has moved on with her babies. And then with NK, underneath that is mice. And that is something eating at you and something you're just not. It's like uh, depression and, um, oh, just addiction and just a vileness inside, you know, just, and, and this is actually the vileness is something that um, is an anchor around NK's ankle. So this isn't about her, but I'm just verifying that uh, this is a Chris Watts reading. All right, so his thoughts now. So this guy's a robot. I just want you guys to know that when it comes to um, when people tell him to do something, he does it like he follows the rules very steadfastly and and this can be tracked back through um, when he was a little boy even you know he was a, a kid and even his his mother said oh he never did anything wrong you know he did exactly what he was told and, and you know this and that and so it goes back either even from his mom his mom would tell him what to do that's what he feels felt more most comfortable with and Shanann, um, she was able to um, lead him to, you know, tried to anyway, poor girl, um, until someone else stepped in and told him what to do. You know, so he's always somebody telling him what to do. And so in that respect, he's comfortable in that position there. I mean, he's does what he's told. He keeps his head down. Now, it looks like to me... Um, birds of a feather flock together so he's in a population of where um, I mean his the guards are always on guard the guards are always on guard um, they're doing a great job in, in keeping him safe now here's the thing um, we want him <laughs> we want him to live a very full life in the prison system because um, this would be true justice. Because every day is just like the day before. There is no change. It, it will, what this does is helps him relive that moment. I mean, this is like a hell on earth, right? I think this is what he deserves. Um, and, and, that's what the guards want because none of them, nobody likes him. Um, but, and they don't like what he did, absolutely, of course. But they also want him to suffer every day, as we all do, as we all do. This is his just, this is, this is his justice right now. Um, now, um, I kind of want to delve into into something here now there's also oh there's something down the road that is he's I'll get into that in a minute um, what I do want to mention is this creepy slithery thing that's attached to him that visited me in my dream And this thing, I just want you to know, this thing was conjured up. Now, I, this is where I'm going to get super weird, you guys. If you don't like it, then you're going to have to shut me off. And you know, please, please do if, if this doesn't resonate with you. Um, this was conjured up in the house. And it helped facilitate his actions that horrible night and uh, <clears throat> so um, my impression of it when it visited me in my dream it was it was black it was so black and it hides behind things doors um, and it's ice cold and when I went near it to banish it from 
me for my for my space um, my emotions were slowed down um, I felt like I was running through like um, slime cold slime and the more I came up to it the more fearful I became to push it away from me and this is what's attached to him now this thing um, so you know I want to get back to one thing he claims that the girls visit him right and um, <laughs> um, that is not them I am telling you right now that is not them this thing shapeshifts and it likes to torture him and good I'm, I'm saying you know that's that's all part of its game you know and 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 it's attached to him and they're like symbiotic they're they're it's like his shadow and um, it's it what it does is it's shape-shifting and it um, it can sound like the girls it mimics it's a very good mimicker and of Shanann and uh, it'll do that to him it's not, it's not, Shanann and the girls don't go anywhere near him. They have nothing to do with him. They've moved on. Um, I want to kind of get back to the house real quick. Um, and I, I know I want to do a separate reading, but remember the strange giggle in the closet when the search dogs went in there, that weird giggle. That was that thing imitating NK that was not the girls so let's move on so this thing and I'm, I'm looking at it right here it was created now um, NK was involved with a lot of the old dark magic again I'm getting weird again you guys so this goes back to even before the Aleister Crowley days, but I don't know if you guys have ever heard of Aleister Crowley, but he was um, a master at creating entities that was able to um, perform tasks for him. And she is a huge, big um, Aleister Crowley fan, and she was able to mimic that magic and attach that to Chris because she wanted this to happen and she wanted she wanted um, um, she wanted this to be successful but what she doesn't know is, is that when you play with the darkness like that without a, not enough light um, it backfires so badly and this is what happens and now this thing it's shackled to him and um, although um, um, I got to tell you, um, uh, it's not so much shackled, but it's it loves it. It's attached to him, but it will go back to the house where it was birthed. OK, sometimes not all the times when that new family's in there. And well, like I said, I'm going to do another reading on this. But it does, it does go and um, messes with that family at times. So this thing, um, so now this thing was created to spread um, intentions of unaliving, okay? I can't say the M word, I guess. But anyway, um, that was its intention. And <clears throat> instead of putting an expiration life on this thing, like NK, if you're going to, I'm not trying to give anybody hints on how to do this, but that's how you properly do it. You put an expiration date on it and it goes away. Well, she didn't know how to do that. She's too stupid. And she didn't do that. And so that's why this thing is still around. Um, and it will be around until 
Chris Watts is unalived. And um, what it's been doing to him at night, like I said, it's been mimicking his family. Um, it's also been giving him mental suggestions. It wants him to unalive himself. And currently, uh, Chris Watts is um, doing this, you know, everybody knows. I mean, I watched it. It's like this um, Bible thing. He's, you know, really delving himself. He's into the Bible and whatnot. And, and this is short-lived, you guys, because, um, like, you know, this is all part of prison life. You know, they, they go in and these long-termers and, you know, and this is part of the process. It's like a, um, a mourning process, but it goes down the steps and this is part of it where they find religion again and they are, you know, um, you know, God forgives them and they forgive themselves, but then it reverts back. It starts going back the opposite direction. So in about another few years that's what's going to start happening to him and this slithery dark thing um, will end up gaining the upper hand <clears throat> excuse me and um, he will be more sub he will be listening to the suggestions more and more and it's this thing when it talks the oh that what I when I heard it, it, it sounded like, um, it was, uh, I don't know if I can say it here, but the Harry Potter Slytherin snake talk is a hiss, hiss, like that weird hissing verbiage. And, uh, that's when he goes to sleep, that thing enters into his mind and it's showing him all the ways in which to do this. It will, it will, um, eventually, uh, tip the scales in that direction. Uh, something that he will be planning for a long time on how to do this to himself. So, but we don't want him to do that. We want him to, to be there in that prison rotting in its cold walls, living day after day in the same manner every day in reflection of what he's done. That's, that's my opinion. That's what I want for him. But this thing has ulterior motives. It wants to take um, control of um, Chris's soul. And when, if, I, I, and I got to tell you, either way, if this thing lives, or I mean, if Chris lives um, the next 40 or 50 years or whatever, you know, um, it will stick with him. But regardless, when Chris passes, this thing is going to hold him hostage there at that prison. And they're just... Um, he's gonna he's just gonna take control of him and he's gonna do um, Chris is gonna do his bidding after that I don't know this is this is so weird I know I know I know uh, and I apologize but you know um, I had one person say yeah we want to know all the details well hopefully you know <laughs> this this is what I'm seeing you guys and um, I also want to mention something too here that um, uh, he, he, what he does is, is like, um, it's hard to describe, but this thing lives off of like electricity, like things, electric, you know, um, light bulbs and um, and all of that, uh, that, that stuff will go blink, it'll blink and, um, 
the guards are pretty creeped out about it actually they um, when they come in and check up on them because the lights are on all the time um, in certain areas of the prison and and um, and at night around his jail cell area it blinks and um, it only happens around in his his area and they hear um, that thing mimicking um, the girls in Shenan and they think it's it's the girls in Shenan but it's not it's that thing um, he also he's in that stage where you know he's finding religion um, he actually thinks that um, he may get out of prison one day this is another part of the denial in the in that process and uh, his mom is is feeding him his you know oh well you know maybe we can try this and try that but this is just torture for his mom too really um, because you know, regardless of how you look at it these this is his her child even though what he did was absolutely horrible she can't see that what she's doing is blaming other things and if you notice that that's what she's doing because if she were to, to fully understand and realize exactly what he had done she would hate him too so um, give them a little bit of understanding when it comes to that I mean I can't even fathom having to go through that myself I, I would never who, who nobody knows what they would do I'm not saying it's right and I'm not saying it's wrong I'm just you know it, I just feel so bad for all the families because of this ripple effect um, and I would like to say something uh, now when it comes to this thing and giving him suggestions um, I'm gonna say within oh, he's really gonna get serious about doing something to himself I'll say Oh, maybe the next like the next five years um, and then there's gonna be conspiracy about it because everybody's gonna think well you know it was an inside job because of how well he planned it out and um, and it's gonna look suspicious but he just mark my words people there was no conspiracy he did this himself I don't wish that on anybody like I said I want him to live every day of the rest of his life in that prison in that you know 23 hour lockdown um, I mean that's that's my opinion but yeah I mean I'll say that there is a real I almost didn't even mention it on on the time frame on when that's a possibility or even mention that he would um, do that at all that I see it in my cards but I think it's important to I'm just gonna do full disclosure on this um, because I think that's more important because down the road when this happens um, um, maybe people I don't know I I don't want to I don't have delusions of grandeur or anything but uh, maybe with this out there um, maybe people will not blame the guards so much because they do a really good job there you know they have a tough job and um, they've been keeping him alive this whole entire time and I say kudos to them because there was many many thwarted attempts many many thwarted attempts and these guys um, also they risked their own lives even like 
taking him places because um, an attempt on his life uh, means that they got to get the guard out of the way, right? I mean, that's a dangerous job, you guys. Um, and they they deserve more more pay. I when they're if they have to deal with this wing, this area of the wing. And I, you know, these are like, um, child offenders. He's, that's where, um, Chris is all lumped in with is, is that population. Um, because he's safer there than he would be in the general population. Obviously. I mean, that's like a no brainer. I don't even have to read my cards for that. But anyway, um, I hope this wasn't too weird for everybody. Um, just know if you're going to take anything away from this reading, know that every night, if you're going to take away anything from this reading, every night he's being tortured. Oh, can I say that word on YouTube? He is being, uh, there's nightmares. He has nightmares. Um, he thinks he sees his children. It's not his children. Um, suggestions of unaliving himself. This is actually a true hell on earth for him. And that we can be thankful for because this is justice. This is what he deserves. Um, so, okay. Thanks for listening, everybody. And I will talk to you later.